What's the biggest freak up you have witnessed? I used to live in a small town. The country club golf club of that town was snooty and exclusive. On top of the building was a giant giant golf ball attached to the top of a metal pole. Maybe the size of a minivan. One night, some guys stole the golf ball off the top of the country club, then drove it to the sea, put it on a boat, and left it on a tiny rock island about 200 meters offshore. Then they tried to ransom the golf ball back to the country club for a charity donation. I lived on the cliff over this beach so I woke up that day wondering why the frick there was a golf ball on the rock island and watched the rest of the drama from our balcony. The country club refused to pay the charity ransom for their golf ball. So they got some guy to take his fishing boat out to the island and tried to roll this massive golf ball onto the back of the boat. The boat was too small so they tied it to the boat, half on half off. On the way back, the golf ball filled with seawater and started to capsize the boat so they cut it loose and it sank. We're gonna need a bigger boat. A public company I worked for got fished out of $500k. They apparently received a wire request via email thinking it was from one of our foreign subsidiaries, but it was actually a Chinese scammer. Someone didn't confirm the request, the CFO signed off on the wire, and we blew $500k out of our butt. So one time this girl I used to work with was reaching up to a shelf to get some bottles to flip sauces with. But next to the rack of bottles there was a huge tub of baked beans. I'm talking huwagji. She somehow managed to make it tip over while attempting to get the sauce bottles. Beans everywhere. All over her. All over the kitchen. All over everything. You just satisfied someone's weird kink. On a two lane road. One way and the other way with the double lines. A person behind me got pee at my speed and passed me up by going into the oncoming lane. What the person failed to realize was that I was going the speed limit because the sheriff was in front of me. This dude ends up passing both of us and the police lights come on instantly. I like to think that the sheriff just looked at him with a deadpan face then turned the lights on. I imagine the cop let out one hardy hug. Probably not the biggest fuck up but the one that comes to mind. Driving with my boyfriend when we see the car in front of us start to swerve back and forth a bit. See the driver clearly taking selfies of some sort and had time to comment on it before the car plows into a mailbox. Not a cheap one but a solidly planted thick wooden base one. We pulled over and jumped out to make sure they were okay as they were going about 45 miles per hour. Come up to the door and it's some teenage guy taking in his bent hood and smashed windshield. Do the standard are you okay? Do we need to call someone only for him to reply no? My parents should be close behind and they're going to kill me. Apparently they had just bought him his first car and they were on their way home from the dealer. He was never seen again. I worked at a car wash. We had add-on services people could get. One was armor all. Five dollars per region. A guy came in and ordered a full interior and exterior armor all on his brand new truck. He had King's Ranch seats, so our salesman didn't add that charge, as we generally didn't armor all them. King's Ranch is a type of suede that's generally a really pretty tan color and super soft. It costs about $3,500 for them. Armor all is essentially a grease that makes leather and vinyl shiny. When he got back to his finished car, he pitched a fit because we didn't armor all his seats. We explained that he didn't pay for that charge, and we wouldn't, in good conscience, do it. So he threw a huge fit, screaming and cursing and insisting to talk to the manager. We all tried to talk him out of it, but he wouldn't budge. My boss was a dong. So finally he said, frick it, do it. In fact, do it for free. So we did. I felt like I was committing a mortal sin rubbing greasy solution all over these beautiful suede seats. But the customer is always right. A. The guy walked back to his truck after it was finished with a smug look of satisfaction. Until he looked at his seats and his entire face dropped and turned ghostly white. I said anything else I can do for you in shock. He said. H. How do I fix this I told him. Get it on or added a few more times to even out the color. But it'll never be the same again. Sorry. This is why we tried to talk you out of it. Sweating and shaking. He just said. I. Thanks. And drove off. If you ever have a service provider actively not trying to make more money off of you, you should probably listen to them. I'm a retired electrician. In my life, I've seen some bad things happen. One time, 
In 1982, myself and another electrician were up in an articulating lift, probably elevated 40 feet up. We had shut the power off to what it was we were working on the night before, and needed to splice into the existing 3 phase 480 volt circuit. I had the wire loppers, cutters, and said to my partner before we cut into these lines, I'd like to go check that power source for dead. He said listen, we shut it off last night, what more do you need to check? I handed him the loppers and said then you cut them. I turned the other way, he did, and b o o o o m. He was, luckily, wearing safety glasses and it shot out plasma, fire and molten copper all over him. The breaker feeding this circuit tripped luckily too, otherwise there would have been a fatality, maybe even two. My dad was a live wires man. I think that's what they are called, the people that get to play with live power lines, and he was setting up a generator for a small town of a few hundred. He not being the brightest spark ended up using a wrench to tighten one of the points and it hit the other one. It melted a solid wrench. Luckily he wasn't part of the circuit so he was mostly okay. I was in a long line to let my little fishing boat in at a launch in Michigan. The guy in front of me was with friends and going on about his brand new 32 foot boat, looked like a yacht. He was only putting it in this lake to test it out before he took it out to the bay. As they continued to dote over the boat, they kept removing all the tie downs, and the winch strap. As they got to the ramp, they pulled forward and straightened out the trailer. As he started to back up, he tapped the brakes and the beautiful, brand new, pristine boat slid off the trailer, onto the concrete ramp. It then slid about 20 feet or more down the rough concrete ramp into the water. Everyone was just standing there in disbelief. And to make it even better, the momentum of the slide carries the boat out into the lake. Someone that was in the water was nice enough to ferry him out to his mistake. Probably left him with a sinking feeling all day. City construction crew was renting some space at my work to store gravel for a local project. Dump trucks coming in and out all day. One driver came in with a load, dumped it in the back and proceeded to pull out of our driveway. Problem is, he didn't lower his bed, so it was sticking up about 20 plus or so. I was in the office and saw him drive by one of our bay doors and was like WTF. Went out to the front to warn him, but it was too late. Watched him tear down some power lines as he turned onto the street. Heard he got fired for it. Poor guy. He was nice too. He is lucky he didn't die. At a bar in a beach town over the summer, a drunk 20 something gets kicked out by the bouncers. This bar can get rowdy and it's right across from the police station, so there's usually a cop around. Now, I've been kicked out of this bar before after I got too drunk after a breakup. There's no ramifications, just come back when you're sober on another night and you're good. This guy wasn't having it. The police tried talking him down saying look. You are not in trouble but you need to leave. Sleep it off it's almost closing time. The guy then tried to sucker punch the police officer in the face. He went from sleeping it off at home to getting a criminal record for being an idiot. Misdemeanor being an idiot is the charge that keeps jails full on weekends. Walked into a liquor store at 10pm to get some Concord grape wine. No employees in the store smelled like weed. Turns out 3 employees were in the beer fridge smoking i'm assuming some theft went on while they did this since i saw people walk out with bottles right before walking in i was about to leave when another customer walked in turned out it was some higher up from the company chief operating officer who lived nearby and liked to check stores at random he apologized to me sold me my bottle of wine then told me he had calls to make and to have a good evening pretty sure they all got fired on top of losing the ability to work with any liquor ever again Freaking morons not taking turns getting high. Comma freaking morons not taking turns getting high. This made my sides hurt. I worked for a small e-commerce retail brand. One night, me and the email marketing person were the last ones in the office. Heading out to happy hour right after she finished setting up and sending a marketing email to our email list of about 15,000 people. We were trying to come up with a subject line and she was testing different ideas out. Typing them in the subject field to see to see how it looked. We were feeling uninspired and stumped on a good line, and were growing antsy and a little loopy. She laughed, made a noise of exasperation, and typed, frick this into the subject field. We both laughed, and I kept trying to think of an idea. Suddenly she screamed out loud, 
and I looked up to see email sent on the email client page. She had just sent the email to 15,000 people, including everyone in our office subscribed to our email list. Three minutes later, our boss called to fire her. Good news is we still made happy hour. Body first, then attachments, then subject, and then recipients. Always always always. When I worked in S&R, my former supervisor told a co-worker to wrap some parts. The guy thought he said scrap. He made it through two of the five parts before the supervisor realized he was missing with parts we needed to ship. Easily more than 10 grand. Totally lost. My stepfather worked for a large tent company. The team showed up to take down a massive tent after a circus left town only to find an elephant standing in there. I didn't witness it personally, but my former boss told me this story. He was a chef in a restaurant and one of the line cooks was in charge of pulling down the hood vents and cleaning them at the end of the night. They are above the grills and fryers. Guy didn't cover the fryers or let them cool down. He stood on the edges, essentially straddling it. He slipped. Leg went into still hot grease oil. Its foot got caught in the grate at the bottom so it took even longer to pull his foot out as he couldn't get it out of the grate. I believe my former boss said the guy had to get his leg amputated below the knee. Yikes, I was in the kitchen when a girl had the fryer explode on her. She was using an ice cream scoop to shape fried tortilla bowls for some reason. The ice cream scoop was one of those ones filled with antifreeze. It blew up, shrapnel, hot oil, screaming. I thought it was a terrorist attack. I will never forget her screams. She survived but her arm and half her face required some work. We were working on a construction site. The forklift got stuck in the mud right next to the building. A bunch of guys all got around the thing trying to push it out of the mud. One guy was in a very bad spot behind the forklift. When the driver threw it in reverse, it ran over the guy's entire right foot. I imagined they had to amputate. It is very hard for me to believe they were able to save it. As soon as I saw forklift stuck I was afraid this ended in a fatality. Take heavy equipment safety seriously, people. I worked in a hotel restaurant where many of the employees were close and did lots of outdoor things together and they usually drank. I tended to stay sober because I had kids and someone had to call our manager to post bail occasionally. Not even kidding. One of those outdoor things was floating down in river in inner tubes. One or two vehicles would be left at point B downstream and we drive upriver to point A to start the journey. We left two cars at the end point and headed back to A. Once there a slightly buzzed cool dude parked his nice Toyota truck on the bank. We got in our tubes and began meandering downstream. We stop, swim, chilly TC and after a few hours floated down to point B. I drove us back and there was no Toyota. The other car was there and cool dude is losing his mind. We're convinced it's been stolen until someone notices a weird flat maroon thing in the middle of the river. It's the top of the cab of his truck. All we could figure is he knocked it out of gear getting stuff out and it rolled in. He got a new one. Same color so I guess he had good insurance. Insurance or a whole bunch of negative equity. Perhaps his new truck is underwater too. A factory worker got a near full depth lower arm burn. Someone had heard that putting cold water on a burn was a good idea. The tap was on full. The burn was cooled. Unfortunately when we got to him his lower arm was completely degloved and hanging from his fingers in the sink. Oops. It sends shivers down my spine just reading the word degloved even when it is just a fingertip never mind a whole lower arm. I work in a medical clinic. The mail delivery company that shipped up frozen human eggs decided to ignore the remain refrigerated notice on the container because their country, Canada America, had a long weekend we didn't. As a result the container sat in the back of the delivery truck. For 3 days. It was thousands and thousands of dollars. Never mind the waste of energy involved from the donor's perspective. Jesus. Harvesting human eggs is a nightmare process and a half. I hope someone was held accountable for that. From 2007 to 2009, I worked at the movie theater in the student union at my college. It had a 35mm projector, not a digital one, so we had to work with the film. We only ever had two people working at a time, one projectionist and one manning the box office. We mostly just set the film to run and then stayed in the box office until the movie was over. For this particular night, I was running the projection booth. 
and we were showing a really gory horror movie that I had no interest in watching. So I set the movie to run and left the projection booth. When the credits started rolling, I went to check on the film. And it turns out that the platter never started spinning. So the film just ran through the projector and piled on the ground. There are failsafes to prevent that. But for some reason they weren't tripped. Now, an entire movie on film is long, like miles long. It took around 5 hours past my shift to fix. And that was with the help of the other person who was working that night. I was positive that I was going to be fired. But thankfully my boss didn't blame me. I used to work at a hospital. A patient had gone through an invasive procedure and was recovering in the IQ. Three techs come by some hours later because there is a tool or something they couldn't find after the procedure and suspect they left it inside the patient. Q in getting an ambulatory x-ray done and realizing that it is in fact inside the patient. Since it was their mistake and don't wanna tell their superior, surgeon what happened, they decided to do an impromptu procedure on the patient on the IQ to get the tool back. During procedure something goes bad and the patient died. They still didn't get fired. A woman I know went in for a standard procedure and the dumbass doctor left scissors in her. She complained of pain for weeks and he didn't give a crap. She got life flighted when she almost died in her sleep and she lost her kidney and her other kidney is in bad shape. Doctor was fired and she is awaiting a multi-million dollar settlement. I work in research science. We use equipment called centrifuges which spin material incredibly fast to separate them out. Normally bench top centrifuges can spin up to about 20,000 times the force of gravity. Larger ones can go higher. We have a piece of equipment referred to as an ultra centrifuge. Tens of thousands of pounds in money, bolted to the floor so it doesn't move etc. It spins at well over 100,000 times the force of gravity, nearer 200,000. Now, imagine a washing machine. When it's out of balance it rocks and knocks and can start moving across the floor. Now realize that your washing machine spins at about a max of maybe 1,500 RPM. I knew a chap who unbalanced samples in an ultra centrifuge. For whatever reason the safety mechanisms didn't kick in or parts just failed. It span up and hit a point where the rotor couldn't sustain itself and collapsed at almost 100,000 times gravity. The collapsing rotor, which weighs around 10-15 kg, buckled the spindle and came flying off under vacuum. It punched a hole in the side of the solid metal centrifuge several inches thick, now waddling its way across the room, and blasted a hole in the side of the concrete and brick building. Pieces of metal, brick and virtually disintegrated rotor were found across the car park several hundred meters away. Dude caused incredible amounts of damage by being careless. I have plenty of other stories if people are interested. I'm picturing myself loading up the ultra centrifuge so I can finally do that science thing I need to do with it and I hit the start button and have to go pee and go down the hall briefly and halfway through relieving myself I hear and feel the sound of complete and utter devastation coming from the direction of the giant machine I just turned on. My buddy used to be in the army. He was a captain. They had an exercise and he was supposed to send up training ammo. Instead he fricked up and sent war stock. Millions of dollars of war stock ammo was wasted. My buddy then tried to hide it and lied about it. They did an audit. He was caught. He tried to lie his way through the investigation. He ended up getting kicked out of the army and since he didn't complete his contract he ended up owing the army like 50k for them paying for his school. I remember the night he told me what happened and I told him dude fess up now and apologize. For your information the difference between war stock and practice ammo is the expiration date. You want to use old ammo that's about to expire for training and you use the new stuff to fight with. Worked for an electronics manufacturing company once. We started getting tons of shipments from a part distributor and soon our entire stock room was filled with boxes containing LCD screens. I think we received around 16-20k LCD screens in total. We didn't question it. We just assumed a big order was coming in, but it never did. We used maybe 300-400 of them over the course of a year and then we just had all these unused screens taking up space in our warehouse. Well, it turns out that our client's part buyer had broken his leg during a ski trip and was on some heavy duty painkillers while he was at work. 
He saw he could get a good price if he ordered in bulk but added a few too many zeros in his drugged up state. Not only did he drastically order way more parts than his company could ever hope to use he also caused a worldwide shortage of this particular LCD display for months because all of the parts were being produced and sent to us straight to us. Back in the 90s I was taking part in some special ops training in Okinawa. A SEAL team was supposed to arrive during the night from the sea down the cliffs behind us. To adjunct us. They would be coming in by hovercraft. And would then rock climb up the cliff before dawn. For some reason they ended up commandeering the hovercraft. Which none of them were qualified to operate. And beached it on a reef. An Amtrak. Amphibious armored personnel carrier was sent out late the next morning to tow the hovercraft off the reef. It sank, and so did the hovercraft. A second Amtrak was sent out to try to recover them, and it sank, too. So, because the SEAL team decided to go stupid cowboy during a training op, the military lost three amphibious craft in a day. This reads like something out of a Leslie Nielsen movie. Oh man, here we go. Went on a cruise with my family this past summer, was sitting at a mini bar like seating area near a side of the boat eating before we set sail. I look down and see this forklift moving around carrying a massive stack of glass panes. After watching for a minute I see the forklift stop and the panes all start falling and smash everywhere. The forklift driver looks over and drives off and the poor dude by the truck grabs a broom and starts sweeping. Maybe not the biggest I've seen, but the best one I can remember. It's late but if I remember tomorrow, I'll see if I can find the pictures of it. I was a boiler operator in the navy. We had about a 10 guy team to run the aft boiler for the prop. Anyway, the evaporator. For making the fresh water for crew consumption and most importantly for boiler makeup water. Decided to crap the bed. And just started passing salt water through the evap. When that happens. You're supposed to instantly trigger the three-way valve to dump the high salinity water overboard. The guy in charge of the evap didn't pay attention, and aligned the evap straight into the makeup feed tank. He didn't realize that's what he did so the second of two feed tanks was slowly getting filled with pure salt water. Shortly after, the first tank was below 50%, so we shifted to the second tank. At this point nobody knows anything about the salt water. The tanks are shifted. And about 5 minutes later all sorts of alarms start going off. We were down to one boiler on a deployment. Led to a full congressional inquiry. Captain's mast for that guy. All sorts of huck to pay. Super long work hours. And lost port time for engineers. That guy cost the taxpayers so much money. So. Much. That'll spike your conductivity. Working on the construction of Ocean Reef Club in Key Largo in 1972, I was on the form crew, and we were pouring the tie beam on the second story of a condo complex. For those unfamiliar, this means pouring a solid concrete top on cinder block walls, windows and more in compliance with construction codes in high hurricane risk areas. Our 100 ton crane was lifting buckets of concrete that were released to pour into what most might call molds on the tops of walls. The reaches of cranes with a heavy load have limits. The crane operator reached too far, and it toppled. The big boss of our company arrived in his truck soon after, and he commenced to yelling and screaming. Reaming out the crane operator for being so stupid. He was tight jawed and red faced, literally hysterical. About a hundred workers stopped working to watch his antics. Then that boss jumped into his truck, threw it in reverse and stomped on it, only to drop his truck six feet into a rectangular shaped hole cut out for a large septic tank. It was so tight on the sides they had to break the windshield so he could climb out the worker's laughter was uncontrollable. He crawled out of the hole, even more pee and red faced. Then he angrily stomped off to the background of stifled laughter. A 241 special, how generous. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.